Докладчик Алекс Бажинов, и он нам разложит про ICO, да, расскажет. ICO, как делать, как проводить, может даже возьмете прошлого, предыдущего спикера, расскажете, что он не так делал или что так делал. Пожалуйста, аплодисменты и поехали. Hi everyone, my name is Alex, and I will be presenting for you today. But before I start, because we are after a coffee break and everybody has so much energy, I would just like you to ask you to stand up first and we'll do a bit of stretching because that's what you have to do from time to time, you're right? So can you all get up on your feet right now? Sure we can. Let's do that. All right, so let's uh, get the people in the back because I'm sure the people in the back are the ones who are the most tired and the ones who need the stretching the most. So let's just stretch a bit up, right? A bit to the right, a bit to the left. All right. And left one, rotate the neck a bit, and get back to your seat. All right, thanks uh, a lot for uh, taking part in this uh, small energizer, let's call it. So uh, who am I and why am I here? Uh, I'm here because I like helping startups, like helping startups grow, and grow without spending a lot of money on it. What is my background? Uh, I've started my own two different startups that I exited successfully. I worked for Google in Dublin for two years, and then I launched my newest startup uh, with which I've raised an ICO successfully. What is this presentation going to be about? Uh, it will be a lot about how to prepare for an ICO, and why actually do you need an ICO in the first place? So the points that you have to consider The points that you have to consider before actually launching your ICO. Are there many people in this crowd who actually want to launch their own ICO? Perhaps uh, raise of hands. All uh, right. So I previously actually raised my hand when we were asked if we are investing in ICOs, and there were some people already. So let's say this presentation applies to both, whether you want to launch your own project uh, with tokens or whether you're an investor looking to launch and what things you need to be looking out for when investing. So, uh, right, before you turn to ICOs, there are a few things that you need to consider. First, you have to identify the reason for an ICO. I've been in uh, crowd financing for over seven years, I would say. I started off on Kickstarter uh, and raised successfully two projects there. And uh, I would say that ICOs are not much different from platforms like Kickstarter. Not different in a way of how you develop the project. Who do you have to involve for the project to be successful? So before you actually go for an ICO, you have to consider, is this the best way for you to raise money? You have to consider the other options, like venture capital, for example. And make an assessment of whether or not going for one financing method, such as ICO, is better than losing venture capital investors. I'm saying losing because we actually, on our way to raising an ICO, lost our venture capital interest. We were about to close a deal uh, with equity, and the investors backed out the first moment they heard we're going to introduce tokens. This is something that could happen to you as well. Investors, traditional investors, are not very excited about cryptocurrency businesses. So. Another thing is you have to consider, if you want to introduce a token to your business, does it really make sense? Are you going to introduce the token just to make transactions? Can it be done with Ethereum or Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, like we saw earlier today? Or does the token really bring some value to the user when they buy it? And also, is decentralization or blockchain really a necessity for your business? We've seen some problems with blockchain. We've seen issues with scalability, issues with speed. There are other ways for you to use a technology that's more adapt for your business. Do you really need blockchain? These are the things you have to consider. And not just jump in, into the industry because it's hot, because it's trendy, and because you add a blockchain word to your business and your stock actually jumps 30%, which actually happened a few months ago when a company just added blockchain and their stock just jumped the next day. The next thing you have to consider for an importance to be successful with your ICO. It's over with the times where you come up with a great website and a white paper 
and you raise 30 million or even more. Now you actually have to have a working product, a product that is being tested or used by some kind of community. This is the best way for you to be successful because you're actually proving there is something working before you are introducing your token. What Gordon was saying earlier was you shouldn't be offering tokens that don't currently have a utility and cannot be used. Otherwise, they might be considered securities. Therefore, you need to have a minimum viable product. So, you can see also that some of the most successful ICOs are actually ICOs with an MVP, like Storch, uh, which raised 20 million in six hours. Another thing is having a real utility. I'm sure not all of you are considering launching a security, if in general they are. Uh, but having a utility actually means that the person can do something with your token and purchase something other than just making a transaction with the token. What that means is, and I'll give you an example, tokenizing, for example, time. There was a person in Russia who tokenized his time. He divided his year in seconds, and he produced a smart contract. And whenever you buy a token, you actually buy a second of his time. You see a real utility, a real value of buying that token. You have to consider that whether or not in your white paper you can substitute the name of your token with Ethereum and it would still make sense. So it's less likely to be considered a, a security if you actually have a very good description of why your token is a utility and how it actually brings value. And of, often, of course, it shouldn't be about profit sharing, revenue sharing, or involve any kind of equities in the token sale. One of the two things that I said are the most important for a successful ICO, first one being the MVP, and the second one, of course, the community. You start building a community more than six months in advance, even before maybe you actually have an MVP. You need to involve the community in more than just kickstarting your project or marketing the token. Community can be built in different ways. And here are some examples of how you can actually start doing that. There was a talk about bounty campaigns, airdrops, affiliate programs, of course sales, not many people talk about, and wisdom of the crowd. Let's go through all of these in more detail. Bounties were actually a tool used by game developers previously when they were unable to find bugs in the game or unable to create a better game. They were offering bounties to users, beta testers, for them to gain feedback and actually make a better product which then can be offered to the same customers who gave feedback because they were the ones to build it. Does it make sense? I think it does because you're involving people who give their opinion, put their heart in the product, and then eventually become your customers because they helped you build that. This is how I became successful on Kickstarter. We actually started building a community months ahead rather than just jumping into the ICO or the Kickstarter projects. We asked the community, what kind of features do you want to see in our products? so that we build a product that's actually required by the market, rather than think ourselves, is this really necessary? So the next, how you can actually structure bounty campaigns, you can use different methods and use them for different things. Most common are social media, advertising, uh, sharing in different Facebook and Twitter accounts. Uh, also. Writing articles for you is quite a useful one. You could use your community for actually paying them with your own tokens for them to produce content for you, which you can then reshare. Of course, Bitcoin Talk is a popular one where people can actually get involved by putting a simple signature underneath their profiles. And whenever they post, they also get tokens from you. Translations, bug reporting, and referrals are also popular methods for using bounties. So, one of the first bounty airdrops, actually, this is all about airdrops. Uh, one of the first airdrops was organized by Omisigo, and their thinking behind it, the philosophy is, this whole industry is about decentralization. You go back to the white paper of Bitcoin, it's all about this separating and giving the token to as many people as possible. However, we're seeing a trend towards more private sales, more closed sales, which actually puts tokens in the hands of individual investors and not of the general public. We should still aim to decentralize all tokens because behind a successful token is a large community of people. It's not a private pool of investors. 
Therefore, airdrops are a great way to produce free marketing. Decentralize your token, put it in the wallets of as many people as possible. You can easily target, you can segment people from even just by taking information from Etherscan of what kinds of tokens are people holding in their wallets and target people with specific tokens, maybe the competitor's tokens, maybe tokens you think are fitting well. You can also target people based on tokens they're using on exchanges, Binance Coin, KuCoin, and then connect that with the exchanges you want to go to. So you immediately have an audience that will be able to purchase. Actually, one of the greatest examples here is on-chain that back in the days offered their tokens for just participating and signing up for a newsletter. And people now are actually, from those tokens, they made $1,000. It's as simple as that, and you can actually allow people to earn money as well as help you promote. The only unfortunate part is you cannot say no to an airdrop. You cannot cancel an airdrop in your wallet. So it becomes something like spam. Sometimes, I guess in the near future, you open your wallet and you have these 25 new tokens that just came up. I'm sure that most of the times you wouldn't want to have them. At the same time, airdrops can be a bit problematic with Americans as well. Everything is problematic with them, I think. Uh, so another way to develop your ICO is involving affiliate partners. What this means is you have to look for other media or just individual influencers who can bring you traffic. And you have to keep on working with them. It's not just that you set up a partnership and you leave the conversation never to be touched again. You have to in consistently increase your network of affiliates. Uh, what this also means is putting your logo on as many other websites as possible. I'm seeing this great trend in, for example, Russian startups who are doing ICOs. They're very closely linked to each other. Uh, their community is quite substantial. And what happens is all these new ICOs coming in, they're getting the support of previous ICOs. I myself am based in Prague. And I can tell you there are ICOs launching in Prague with millions of dollars raised in their ICOs. And I never knew they're from Prague. That's the difference in communities. So also when setting up your ICO, think where you set it up. And try to find a place where the community of cryptocurrency enthusiasts is already developed. So that you can gain this knowledge. You can also gain the additional crowd those startups have already developed. What you have to avoid is cannibalization. And what that means is your affiliates, <clears throat> your affiliates will probably also use paid advertising. At the same time, you might be using that as well. So you might be bidding on the same keywords, which means you're automatically cannibalizing your own audience. Woof. Well, it's got stuck. Yep, 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 yep. What about sales? All right, so I've been going around and talking to many different startups. And not all of them actually have a dedicated sales department that is targeting investors, that is targeting particular partnerships and getting advisors. An actual investor relations person in the company that would go to these events and would not only talk to people, just random conversations, but would proactively look for investments, would close investments at these events, would find new partners and close them subs substantially during the events or after. So if marketing is a loudspeaker, then sales is the hook. You're going to create a buzz around your project, and then you want the salespeople to go to events and actually start attracting those people individually. If we go in, if you, if we go in how you have to do that, you have to start attending these kind of events four to six months in advance. For example, Target North America, there is plenty of events happening there, Europe and Asia. For example, Augur started their promotion six months uh, in advance and raised easily five million. This project is now worth, I think, around 60 million, uh, their market cap, I mean. And it's also important to, when you're involving these private investors to also have a holding period so you avoid the dumping of the coin. Another clear thing that you have to do is partnering up. And this is not only for visibility. It's also for developing your technology. It's also for saving your developer's time. Rather than developing something yourself, go find a partner that actually does that. Not only you gain additional crowd to your business, you also gain a product or a technology that's been developed and used. So great businesses are built on great partnerships. Consider that when you're trying to build your own. 
And the last one is, of course, advisors. And this is an important one. I'm hearing people in the crowd saying, we've got no experience in blockchain, cryptocurrencies. Well, not necessarily you need that. You can actually get advisors in the spheres that you don't have expertise in, and they can help you position yourself as an expert in that field. They can help you also push your project in those fields because of their expertise. So definitely you have to consider that those people shouldn't be with vested interest. They shouldn't be only doing it because of the tokens. They should really like your project as well. And the last would be utilizing the crowd, the community, for not only marketing the project, but also actually jump-starting the token, developing the product, getting feedback, actionable feedback from the crowd to make your business better, to produce a product actually required by the market, to gain a crowd for you to be able to raise an ICO successfully much faster. Some of the issues ICOs currently have, regulations and badly organized ICOs. We cannot do anything about regulations. That is something we are unable to change. But better organized ICOs are easy to change. And what that actually means is we have to answer three questions for an ICO to be more or less well organized. First, we have to think how do we involve as many people as possible with some hard cap per person. So that we avoid, for example, if we are having an ICO with first serve, first, first come, first serve basis, we avoid the fact that the larger investors jump in at the beginning and then the smaller people who are supporting the project with promoting it and doing a lot of things like bounties are missing out. Also, big ICOs, the ones that have the most buzz, have issues with doing a KYC for thousands of people. And I'll give you a personal example of Refurium, in which I tried to invest, where they use the crowd. They gained 100,000 people in their telegram, which is wow, right? That's amazing. They had their own strategy of how they did it. The most important part is when the pre-sale was supposed to start, there was a message on the website, pre-sale is over. 100K people missed out because these guys were so popular, they got their private round, they closed it. They were so popular, they decided to cancel the ICO. So 100K people supported this, made this a real project, and didn't get any of the tokens. This is considered a bit of cheating, right? You don't want to be considered one of those. So if you're launching an ICO, beware, beware of the risks. Beware of things that are happening on Telegram, which I consider to be a very ineffective way of communicating with your community. People are impersonating your CEOs, your CMOs. They're gaming the system by getting these 100,000 people in their Telegram chat who are absolutely inactive. And that's why you can use the solution we are currently offering, crowd holding is a place where you start developing your community. You get in touch with the right people to develop a product that's actually required. On crowd hoarding, you come as a business with your own issues. You find a crowd that can solve those issues for you. And you can reward the crowd with your own tokens as well as our tokens. In the end, you get valuable feedback that you can turn into actionable steps for your product to be better. How this works is, you come to the platform, you set a reward of tokens, whether yours or ours. This reward is given to the contributors for their feedback and great ideas about how to improve and make your project better. And eventually, when you decide to raise your ICO, they already have the tokens in their wallets. So they can reuse those tokens to again invest in the project they helped build and make their tokens even more valuable. Crowd coding is about co-creation. It's about involving the crowd. It's about open innovation and crowdsourcing, getting ideas from unexpected places. And it's also about engaging your own employees. Not only Slack or WhatsApp groups. You can actually bring in your employees to our platform and start involving them in the innovation process as well. At the moment, we're offering the following offer. Any business that wants to launch or is preparing for an ICO can come to our platform and after being evaluated by our team would receive 4,000 of our tokens for free to be able to use the platform and start creating a crowd around their business. We have over 20 clients and 15,000 users signed up on the platform. Our clients are companies like Deep Onion, Omnitude, Smart Cash, and others. Some of the trusted partners we've worked with, such as ICO Advert, a listing website, Onload agency helped us build 
landing pages for the ICOs we're working with, and Hosho is a smart contract auditor. And this is uh, the last slide for me. Thanks a lot for your attention. If you want to get in touch regarding promotion, marketing of projects, and community building, I'm free to talk on Telegram as well as on my email. And if you're interested in launching your project and wanting to know more how you can do that with crowd holding, come and talk to me. Thanks.